In the 1930s, when Emanuela Franco, a person whose identity remains largely unknown, donated an enigmatic mummy to the Museum of Anthropology and Ethnography at the University of Turin, Italy. Like many archaeological specimens from that era, the mummy arrived with little contextual information beyond a basic classification as South American artefacts. For decades, she sat in the museum's collection, her dark, naturally mummified skin hiding secrets that would only be revealed through the lens of modern technology. The mummified remains belonged to an adult female who lived between 1215 and 1382 AD, a time frame determined through radiocarbon dating of textile fragments still clinging to her body. Her preservation is remarkable, achieved through natural dehydration in the arid conditions typical of South American coastal deserts. The body is positioned in a characteristic Andean burial posture, seated upright with knees bent, suggesting she was once wrapped in the traditional fardo style, where corpses were bundled in multiple layers of textiles and tied into a bundle. This burial practice was particularly common among the Paracas culture, which flourished along the southern coast of Peru from approximately 800 BC to 100 AD. The Paracas people were master weavers, creating some of the most sophisticated textiles ever discovered in the archaeological record. They were also known for their elaborate burial practices and their distinctive elongated skulls, achieved through intentional cranial modification during infancy. Her lysotrichous black hair remains well preserved, a testament to the exceptional preservative qualities of the environment where she was originally interred. The skin appears very dark, not only due to her natural pigmentation, but also from post-mortem changes that occurred during the mummification process. This darkening of the skin initially obscured one of her most remarkable features, intricate facial tattoos that would only become visible through advanced imaging techniques. For decades, scholars could observe three faint lines running across the right cheek of the mummy, but the poor contrast between the dark tattoos and the equally dark skin made detailed examination impossible with the naked eye. It wasn't until researchers employed multispectral photography that the true extent of her body art became apparent. Using infrared reflectography and false colour imaging techniques originally developed for art conservation work, the research team made a stunning discovery. Not only were the three lines on the right cheek clearly defined as approximately six centimetre long straight lines running from mouth to ear, but entirely new tattoos emerged from the shadows of time. On the left cheek, previously damaged by mechanical and environmental factors, traces of at least one linear tattoo, approximately two centimetres long, became visible. The damage makes it impossible to determine whether this side once mirrored the right cheek's three-line pattern or bore its own unique design. More intriguingly, an S-shaped mark approximately 2.5 centimetres long appeared on the right wrist, completely invisible under normal lighting conditions, but clearly absorbing infrared radiation in the same manner as the facial tattoos. These discoveries represent something unprecedented in the archaeological record. Facial tattoos, particularly those on the cheeks, are extraordinarily rare among ancient Andean peoples. While tattoos on hands, wrists, forearms and feet are well documented among South American mummies, facial markings are so uncommon that some scholars debate whether their apparent rarity reflects actual cultural practices, or simply the difficulty of preserving facial skin on mummified remains. What makes these tattoos truly extraordinary isn't just their rare placement, but their unique composition. When researchers analyse the pigments used to create these markings, they expected to find charcoal or soot, the most commonly reported materials for black tattoo ink throughout history and across cultures. Instead, they discovered something entirely unexpected. The tattoos were created using magnetite, a black iron oxide mineral with magnetic properties, combined with silicate minerals from the pyroxene group, possibly ojit. This discovery represents the first documented use of magnetite for tattooing in ancient South America and one of the rarest instances of pyroxene minerals being used as tattoo pigments anywhere in the world. Magnetite is not an unusual material in itself. It occurs naturally in many geological formations, and has been used as a pigment in various contexts throughout history. What makes its use here remarkable is its intentional selection over the much more commonly available charcoal. The mineral composition suggests sophisticated knowledge of local geological resources and deliberate choice in pigment preparation. The absence of charcoal as the primary pigment challenges assumptions that have persisted in archaeological literature for decades. Most studies of ancient tattoos, when they mention composition at all, simply assume the use of carbon-based materials without conducting chemical analysis. 
This research demonstrates the importance of rigorous scientific investigation, rather than relying on assumptions based on what seems most obvious or convenient. The simplicity of these tattoo designs stands in stark contrast to the elaborate and complex tattoos typically found on South American mummies. Most documented examples from Peru feature intricate representations of animals, geometric patterns, and symbolic designs that clearly relate to textile and ceramic art traditions of their respective cultures. The tattoos found on mummies from the Nazca, Moche, and Paracas cultures often depict birds, snakes, geometric patterns, and anthropomorphic figures that mirror the iconography found on their pottery and fabrics. In contrast, this mummy's tattoos are remarkably minimal, simple straight lines and a single S-shaped curve. This minimalism makes cultural attribution extremely difficult. The three-line facial pattern has no known parallels in the extensive literature on South American tattoo traditions. The closest comparison comes from a single Maitas Chirabayas mummy from northern Chile, who bore X-shaped marks on the left cheek. But even this represents a different pattern and methodology. The S-shaped wrist tattoo, while located in a traditional area for South American tattoos, is far simpler than typical designs found in that region. Most wrist and forearm tattoos from ancient Peru are elaborate compositions, featuring multiple elements and complex geometric or zoomorphic patterns. The solitary S shape on this mummy represents a level of restraint that seems almost modern in its minimalism. To understand the broader context of this mysterious woman, it's essential to examine what we know about the genetic heritage of ancient Andean peoples. Recent advances in ancient DNA research have revealed fascinating insights into the population history of South America, though specific genetic analysis has not yet been conducted on this particular mummy. The indigenous peoples of the Andes belong primarily to mitochondrial DNA haplogroups A, B, C, and D, which are characteristic of Native American populations, and trace their origins to the initial peopling of the Americas over 15,000 years ago. Among these, haplogroup B is particularly common in Andean populations often comprising 50% or more of ancient samples from the region. Studies of ancient Paracas populations have revealed a remarkably stable genetic profile over time. Analysis of Paracas mummies shows a high frequency of mitochondrial haplogroup B2, which remains characteristic of contemporary Andean populations. This genetic continuity suggests that despite the cultural upheavals that occurred over centuries, including the rise and fall of various civilizations, the fundamental genetic structure of Andean populations has remained relatively stable. For paternal lineages, ancient Andean males typically belong to Y chromosome haplogroup Q, which is the predominant paternal lineage among Native Americans. This haplogroup traces its origins to the ancient migrations from Siberia across the Bering Land Bridge. Some populations also show evidence of haplogroup C, another ancient lineage associated with the initial peopling of the Americas. The genetic evidence supports a model of early diversification within South America, with highland and lowland populations beginning to diverge between 9,200 and 8,200 years ago. This separation led to the development of distinct highland adaptations, including genetic changes related to high-altitude living. Though interestingly, many of the expected adaptations to hypoxia don't show the clear selective sweep signatures that researchers initially anticipated. Among the Paracas people, Social stratification was clearly evident in burial practices. Elite individuals were often interred with elaborate textile wrappings, precious metals, and sophisticated pottery. The quality and quantity of grave goods varied significantly between individuals, suggesting a complex social hierarchy. Tattoos may have served as permanent markers of this social structure, visible indicators of a person's place within the community that couldn't be lost, stolen, or transferred like material possessions. The Paracas culture was also known for practicing cranial modification, deliberately reshaping infants' skulls through binding to create elongated forms. This practice, like tattooing, represents a permanent body modification that marked individuals as belonging to the Paracas cultural group. Nearly 98% of individuals found in Paracas burial sites show evidence of intentional cranial modification, suggesting it was a nearly universal practice within the culture. Interestingly, different types of cranial modification may have served different social functions. Research has shown that while both males and females underwent cranial modification, certain styles appear to be associated with gender identity. The bilobate type of modification, for example, seems to emphasize female identity within Paracas society. 
This suggests that body modification practices, including potentially tattooing, may have played important roles in expressing and reinforcing gender roles and social categories. The earliest evidence of tattooing in South America dates back thousands of years. The Chinchorro culture of northern Chile, famous for their sophisticated mummification techniques that predate Egyptian mummification by thousands of years, also practiced tattooing. However, what was once thought to be the oldest known tattoo in the Americas, a moustache-like pattern of dots under the nose of a Chinchorro mummy, has been redated and shown to be younger than the famous Otzi the Iceman from Europe. The Nazca culture, which succeeded the Paracas in the same region, created elaborate tattoos that often mirrored the designs found on their textiles and pottery. Nazca tattoos frequently featured stylized animals, particularly birds, snakes, and felines, as well as complex geometric patterns. The Moche culture of northern Peru, contemporary with the later Paracas period, produced some of the most spectacular ancient tattoos ever discovered. The famous Lady of Chao, a high-ranking Moche woman who died around 450 AD, was covered in intricate tattoos depicting spiders, snakes, and other creatures with likely spiritual significance. The complexity and artistic sophistication of her tattoos rival any found in the ancient world. Further north, the Chanke culture created tattoos of extraordinary delicacy and precision. Recent studies using laser-stimulated fluorescence have revealed tattoos on Chanke mummies with line widths as narrow as 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters, suggesting the use of single needle tattooing techniques of remarkable sophistication. These discoveries demonstrate that ancient South American tattoo artists possessed technical skills that rival those of modern practitioners. Despite extensive research, the precise cultural origin of this mummy remains uncertain. While the burial style and radiocarbon dating suggest a connection to the Paracas culture, some experts have raised questions about this attribution. The tattoo styles, particularly the facial markings, differ significantly from known Paracas examples and may have more in common with tattoo traditions from other regions entirely. Some researchers have suggested that the straight line facial tattoos bear more resemblance to traditions found among Arctic or Amazonian peoples than to typical Andean practices. This raises intriguing questions about possible long distance cultural connections or migration patterns that aren't well understood from the archeological record. The lack of detailed provenance information compounds the challenge of cultural attribution. Museum collections from the early 20th century often lack the detailed contextual documentation that modern archaeology demands. Without knowing exactly where this mummy was found, what other artifacts were associated with her burial, or details about the archaeological site, researchers must rely on the physical evidence of the mummy herself, and comparative analysis with better documented examples. Recent genetic studies have revealed that the peopling of South America was far more complex than previously understood. Rather than a simple north to south migration, evidence suggests multiple waves of migration, population admixture, and long distance movements that connected distant regions of the continent. Ancient DNA research has revealed unexpected connections between populations separated by thousands of kilometers. For example, genetic signatures associated with Australasian populations have been detected in ancient remains from Panama despite the vast Pacific Ocean separating these regions. Similarly, evidence of Denisovan ancestry from an extinct human species known primarily from Siberia has been found in ancient individuals from Uruguay and Panama. These discoveries suggest that ancient South American populations were more mobile and interconnected than traditional archeological models assumed. Trade networks, migration routes, and cultural exchanges may have linked communities across vast distances potentially explaining why this mummy's tattoo styles might resemble traditions from distant regions. The coastal location where this mummy was likely buried would have placed her community at a crucial junction for such long-distance connections. Coastal populations often served as intermediaries in trade networks, and their mobility via watercraft could have facilitated cultural exchanges over much greater distances than overland travel would permit. While many questions remain unanswered, her story contributes to our growing understanding of the complexity, sophistication, and diversity of ancient South American societies, challenging us to see the past not as a simplified prelude to the present, but as a rich and complex period in its own right, populated by individuals whose lives and choices continue to inform and inspire us today.